Good afternoon, Year 10. Uh, by now you have completed your analysis of Aaron Siskind's photograph of Jerome, Arizona, which we looked at last week, which is this photograph here. And by analyzing this, you should have a basic understanding of the style of work that Aaron Siskind takes. Now, this, this week's task is going to be to take some photographs in the style of Aaron Siskind's work. But before we move on to that, we're just going to recap our keywords. So first of all, we've gone over the top concept of abstract. Abstract is art that does not attempt to look like something realistic, but communicates using shapes, colors, and textures. And here we have some examples of abstract art. You can see one of them is a painting where it's all different kinds of marks and colors, but not a specific object. And there we have a photograph that might be a close up of a leaf, but we can't really tell what it is. So abstract does not have to look like something and it kind of can get your viewers attention in more of a creative way. Texture again is a really good keyword for this topic. Um, which you probably already know, already know the meaning of, but just for those of you who don't and a good refresher, it's the surface quality of something and the way something looks like it may feel. So for example, this photograph has a dry and flaky texture. Now this week we have to take photographs inspired by the style of Aaron Siskind. And as we can see from looking at his work, he only takes close-up photographs of objects or textures. Because they are close-ups, you cannot immediately tell what they are, making them abstract. And I'm going to have you take five close-up photographs of natural textures and five of man-made textures. Here we have some of Aaron Siskind's photographs. On the left, you can see some natural textures. And on the right, you can see some man-made textures. So examples here of Natural textures are leaves, tree bark, patterns in the earth. You can look for different kinds of patterns and textures as well, such as maybe different leaves and different plants to find that right kind of abstract texture. And then on the man-made side, you have some peeling paint, a dirty object, and some dripping dried paint. So these are all examples of how Aaron Siskind finds textures in nature and in man-made objects and by photographing them makes them look abstract. So for your photographs you must make sure they are not blurry and you can look for contrasting tones so having clear light and dark areas in your work and also remember we will be editing these so don't worry about the, them being black and white yet because we'll do that in the next step so your pictures might be colorful but we'll be ed editing them as we go on. So just briefly looking at these pictures, they all have those qualities. They're all black and white, which we don't have to worry about yet, but they're close-ups of objects or textures with a really high level of detail. All right, so I'm going to show you some pictures that I've taken that can give you an idea of what to do and what not to do when you take your pictures. So here we have two photographs. One of them is more in the style of Aaron Siskind than the other. I want you to take a minute and think about which one might be the correct Aaron Siskind inspired version and which one is maybe not inspired by Aaron Siskind. Okay, so the first one, there is too much background information. You can see the grass, you can see the sidewalk. It's not a close up and that also means it's lacking the detail we want. And the one on the right, you can see it's a close-up. Because it's close-up, maybe if you didn't see the picture of the wall, you might not tell immediately what it is. I took it on an angle, so there's a bit of perspective happening there. So it creates the kind of viewer gaze that Aaron's this kind of Jerome, Arizona piece had. And it's in focus, so you can see the grains and the high level of detail there in the cement and the brickwork. So you get that level of quality there. Here we have two photographs. One is a picture again that's inspired by Aaron Siskind and one has got a little bit wrong. Here the one on the left is in focus. You can see the detail, a range of colors, and it's a close-up so you cannot immediately tell what it is. And the one on the right, it's, it's abstract because 
I can't really see what it is, but it's a bit too abstract. We're lacking the detail we're looking for here. So make sure your pictures are in focus because in the long run, we'll be looking at doing both drawings and paintings based on these photographs. And if they're no good, we don't really have much to go on. Right, and here we have two actually quite good photographs. They're both in focus and detail. One of them, however, is in the style of Aaron Siskind and the other one is not really. So let's see. Right, the one on the left is in focus. You can see the detail. There's a range of colors and tones so that when we go to the editing stage, there might be a little bit more contrast. And the key thing here is that it is a close up. I cannot immediately tell what it is. So the one on the right, it is um, in focus. There's a range of tones, but because it's not a close up, it doesn't really fit the category of abstract. I can see it's, it's, a, it's a tree immediately. So. These three examples should really show you what to do and what not to do. Here I have my examples of the photographs I've taken. The top five are my man-made examples and the lower five are my natural examples. So think about what kinds of objects you could photograph. My first two here are of a side of a car. So that is the corrosion from a car. This was a piece of torn fabric um, under a display board. And these two are from a brick wall. And underneath here, it's a little bit more obvious. We have a close-up of a leaf, a fresh one, some dry leaves, some trees growing on some wall, a close-up of tree bark here and here. You could look for these textures in your home or you could go outside of your home. I took all of these pictures in Manor Park. Um, it might be a little bit awkward, but I did find it was easier to actually go outside and find inspiration rather than look for it in my home. But you can do this task in your house. You can look for different textures in maybe fabrics and materials or objects could have interesting reflective surfaces as well. So do look for both man-made and natural textures for this task. And the next task we'll look at in a separate video is how to edit your photographs. And you'll see we'll continue on to editing our pictures to fit the style of Aaron Siskind. Now remember, if you have any questions, do email your teacher. We're here to help you. We want you to succeed. And this should be a really fun task for you to actually just start to use a different skill and develop your photography, which is an essential part of the GCSE art course. So enjoy and let us know if you have any issues. Key thing is to get five man-made textures and five natural textures in close-up photographs so that they fit the abstract category of photography.